Good morning, church, and welcome to Waypoint. I would like to invite you, first of all, to take a few moments sometime today to take the announcement sheet that hopefully is in your hand and go through that to see all the incredible stuff that's going on here at Waypoint. If you don't have one of those, make sure you grab one on your way out and, uh, and take a look at that. Um, I also want to let you know that today, 15 minutes after this service, we're going to be gathering back in here for an informational time, one of four informational meetings that we're going to have this year. We call these our Inspire, Inform, Inquire events because hopefully you'll get a little bit of all of those um, at these events. So everybody is invited. It's going to be brief, uh, but it'll help you, give you a heads up on you know, what's going on in the life of our church in a, in a fresh way from, uh, from the staff. And so we just want to invite you to hang around for that time, 15 minutes following the service. Um, if you were here this past year, 2014, and, and you attended Waypoint and you made contributions to Waypoint, I want to let you know that your giving receipts are in the lobby next to the Welcome Center area, and we'd like to, to encourage you to pick those up on your way out today. Uh, I want to shift gears now for a, a few moments. No, wait a minute. Back up. Got the little side note on my, on my notes. I um, also want to let you know that we are going to be beginning a, uh, a special class called Discovering Waypoint. It's a four-week class starting March 8th at the 9.45 time slot. Um, and that is uh, to learn more about our church, about our history, um, not just this church, not just the Clarkson Church, but the history of our denomination, the Free Methodist Church. And uh, so that's going to be a four-week class. It's going to start on March 8th at the 9.45 time slot. And um, it's for junior high students through adults. And if you'd like, if you're interested in participating in that class, we encourage you to, to let us know by filling out the um, the little registration folder as it comes down your row, and this would be a good time to start those, actually. Um, and we also want to let you know that we're going to do another one of these classes uh, a little farther down the road at, the, at this time slot here, at 11 o'clock time slot. Uh, that'll be a little bit later in the year, but that will be coming. Okay, now I am officially going to shift gears into our foundation spotlight moment, okay? Uh, the kids of Waypoint Church here have challenged all of you to, uh, to stretch to do something bold and daring, and to join them in learning eight passages of Scripture this year from now until April 12th. And so I just want to, uh, to take a moment and, uh, and challenge you. Now, last week, Pastor Dale, I, I asked Pastor Dale to mention to you that there would be certain incentives involved today for those who stepped up to the challenge, okay? Now, this morning, I'm here to make good on that promise. And so I brought a couple of large sums of chocolate with me, okay, for just a moment. No, but what I need to know is this. I'd like to know, first of all, if there's anybody in the room that has, has picked up one of those Waypoint challenge sheets, foundations challenge sheets, and has been working on them. I saw a hand down here. Oh, no. Oh, okay, well, okay. Well, I was going to go to you first. But, but by show of hands, has anybody picked up one of those Waypoint foundations challenge sheets out there at the Welcome Center yet? Okay, you'll probably want to grab one of those um, sometime. I did see a hand or two. Now, next question is this. Is there anybody in the room that, could, that would be brave enough and bold enough right now to stand up and into the microphone tell us John 3.17? Anybody in the room that would be willing to do that? Uh, I've got one right there. Okay, all right, Quinn, tell you what, I'll come over to you. How about that? God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And where is that found again? John 3, 17. Give it up for Quinn. <laughs> Woohoo! As promised, you can come up here for a second, okay? I have a large candy bar, or... Large bag of kisses, or... <laughs> now, I can't promise you that I will have a large sum of chocolate for each and every one of you that learns our foundation challenge verses along with us this year. But I can say this, you will not regret it if you do. God will use those verses in your life and to help other people. So let me encourage you again. Pick up one of those foundation challenges sheets at the Welcome Center on your way out today and start learning these verses. There's less than 300 words altogether between the eight verses. We can do this and, uh, and learn those verses along with our kids. 
Okay, I shift gears one more time and let you know that, uh, that Waypoint Church has a lot of partners in ministry. We have some local partners, we have some regional partners, and we have some global partners in ministry. And this morning, um, I would like to introduce to you, by way of the modern wonders of technology and, and FaceTime, um, one, of our, one of the leaders of one of our regional partners, um, Oakdale Christian Academy, and, and the person that I want to introduce you to is Dan Fisher, who is the president of Oakdale Academy down in Kentucky. And Pastor Dale and Dan are going to take a few minutes and update us on what is going on in the life of Oakdale. Are we on? We're on. Hey, good morning, Dan. It's good to see you. Good morning to Waypoint Church from Oakdale Christian Academy. Great to be here. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, it looks like you're in a, a lobby of a, of a building that looks pretty new. Yeah, I'm in the, uh, in the commons of the second floor of the inn, our new girls' dormitory. And uh, we just moved in a couple of weeks ago and uh, just really excited to have this building done. Because we were able to get into this building, we were able to admit four new students that we otherwise couldn't have brought in. So, so super excited to have this uh, really beautiful uh, facility ready and, and ready to serve. So, Well, it's great that we can, um, as a church, be larger than just our four walls and have some not only regional partners but global partners. And we're glad you can be one of our regional partners. And, and it's great to hear a little bit about the ministry at Oakdale Christian uh, Academy. And could you tell me um, maybe some great things uh, that God has been doing in your student body? Some of the things you shared first service would be awesome. Yeah, you know, after I get done here, I'm going to go across to uh, finish the uh, service at our Oakdale Free Methodist Church. And after that, we'll go to dinner together. Uh, tonight, we'll have dinner again, and we'll have a student worship service tomorrow. We have a student, the school starts up again. So many opportunities for in, in this flow of our ministry for us to teach and guide and mentor our students, show them the way to Christ. And it's been really great. Even in this, this semester already, four students have come to know the Lord uh, through, our, through our, well, yeah, partly through our efforts, through the prayers of so many and from your parents. And uh, we're just delighted to be part of this ministry. Really, our work, the hard work really begins once they become Christians because that's when the enemy's after them. And that's when we have to have more difficult conversations as they learn their way in Christ. And, and so... We really would appreciate your prayers uh, with us uh, as we continue to do that. Yes, we will definitely do that. We're going to pray for you this morning, and um, we're going to look forward to, um, I, I think in April we still have it on the calendar. I'm going to come down there and preach on a Sunday morning, and you're going to come here, and we're going to kind of swap congregations for a day. So I'm looking forward to oh, that. That'll be, that'll... <laughs> wow, that scared him, and it froze up. So, <laughs> All right, Dan, let me have a word of prayer with you, all right? Lord Jesus, I thank you so much um, for our partnership with Oakdale Christian Academy in Kentucky. And God, again, thank you that we're part of a global body of Jesus Christ. And thank you not only do we um, have, have benefits because we can help Oakdale, but, but we receive from Oakdale as well. And Lord, thank you for that partnership. Lord, I pray that you'll bless Dan. I pray that you'll bless the staff as, as their semester starting up again. And, and the, uh, Lord, I pray that you'd be with the students. Be with them um, as they are taught the Word of God and they are given the opportunity. Thank you for these four that have made commitments to Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, we know there are more that will be one to Christ uh, this term. And so God, we just thank you for that. We commit this ministry to you. And, and Lord, I pray that you will encourage Dan and let him know uh, that Waypoint is, is praying for him and with our teams that, are, that go there. We want to support him and the ministry there. And God, thank you for this awesome opportunity in your name. Amen. Thanks, Dan. We'll see you later. Hey, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Good morning, people from Waypoint. We are, thank you for coming this morning. Would you stand, please? And we're going to sing a, a hymn this morning. It's not a new hymn. It has wonderful words of the love of Christ and how he lifts us up through the good times and the bad times. Will you sing this chorus with me? Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help.
his everlasting love his arms they reach wider than anyone can ever imagine and he loves you he wants to be with you you sing this with us higher than the mountains that I face stronger than the power of in the trial and the change one thing remains one thing remains you love your love it never changes satisfies my soul and I never ever have to be afraid this one thing remains this one thing remains your love never fails your love never fails it never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails it never gives up 
It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love. Sing that chorus again, and on and on it goes. And on and on and on and on it goes. It never runs out on me, your love. In death, in life, I'm confident. In death, in life, I'm confident. It covered by the power of your great love. My debt is paid. There's nothing that can separate my gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love. Your love is higher than the mountains that I face. Cause it's higher than the mountains that I face. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love. Oh, your love never fails. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Oh, it's higher than the mountains that I face. It's stronger, stronger than the power of the grave. And it constant in the trial and the change. This one thing remains. This one thing. of God. Your love, it never change. Oh, your love, it never change. 
this one thing remains oh your love your love remains the same no matter what we're going through your love remains the same we're higher than the mountains Reading from 1 John 4, starting at verse 9. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It is not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. If we love each other, God remains in us, and his love is made perfect in us. Captured my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you Sing that again You opened my eyes to the wonders anew You captured my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you Oh beautiful one For the last couple of weeks, um, our family has gone through some difficult situations. We've had some ups and we've had a lot of downs. And um, we have felt a lot of love, not only from the power of God, but from this church family. And we uh, just can't express enough the love that you have shown to us through the cards and the emails and the texting and the Facebook and the Twitter accounts. And, of course, the 
wonderful meals. Uh, we can't thank you enough for allowing us to, to grieve and to feel the loss of Kate's mom. Um, but we do know through our faith that uh, she is in a better place and she is at peace now and she is resting. Um, but as humans, we hurt and we feel a great loss and a, and a great emptiness in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds. And um, it's going to take a while for us to, um, to not be sorrowful. But like I said before, we, um, we have a faith in God that uh, he will lift us up and he will pick us up and he will continue to love us through all of this. And then um, yesterday I celebrated a, a birthday and uh, I felt a lot of love through Facebook. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, so uh, just a blanket statement. If you, if you sent me a, a well wish yesterday through Facebook, thank you. Uh, I felt a lot of love. I was sitting in a solo ensemble yesterday playing for a bunch of students and my phone is always in my pocket and it was just going off all the time. For, thank you, thank you, thank you. So <clears throat> I can't thank you enough for the love and support that you have shown us, our family, through our downtime and then the love that you've shown us and through, to me um, through congratulations. Um, so thank you very, very much. But we just want to continue worshiping and loving uh, God through the songs that we sing. We have one more song that we want to sing together. Um, and it is about God's love and how it stretches to the eternity. It is, we, we cannot fathom how big God's love is and his faithfulness to us no matter what we're going through. It just envelops us. And I hope that this morning as we have sung this morning that you have started to feel some kind of love and you've felt the warmth of his presence. And as Dale continues to speak this morning on Ruth and the love that it's outpoured to her and the love that she showed, that uh, you can continue throughout the week to run these songs through your head and these words, that they continue to bless you throughout the week. And this is uh, one song that continues to speak to that. You love, oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your justice flows like the ocean's tide. And I will lift my voice to worship you, my King. And I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. Sing this with us. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. Our strength, and I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. Let's sing that again. I will lift my voice, and I will lift my voice to worship you, my King. And I will find my strength in the shadow of your wings. 
love, O oh Lord. You love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the sky. If my heart is overwhelmed and I cannot hear your voice, I'll hold on to what is true, though I cannot see. If the storms of life, they come and the road ahead gets steep, I will lift these hands in faith, I will believe. I remind myself of all that you've done And the life I have because of your son Love came down and rescued me Love came down and set me free And I am yours, I am forever yours And my heart is filled with hope and every promise comes my way when I feel your hands of grace rest upon me staying desperate for you God staying humble at your feet I will lift these hands and praise I will believe I remind myself of done and the life I have because of your son love came down and rescued me love came down and set me free and I am yours I am forever yours mountain high or valley low I sing out and remind Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that we are forever yours. Thank you, Jesus, that you came on a cross and you died and you shed your blood so that we could come and we could say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong in my life. God, will you forgive me? 
through the blood and the life of Jesus Christ, we're forgiven and we're set free. And the only reason you did that, God, was because you loved us. You sent your son because you loved us. God, thank you that we don't have to earn your love. Thank you that we don't have to deserve it. We simply receive it. And God, today, as we look at a book that was written a long time ago in the Old Testament, Lord, help us to realize the responsibility that we have in that love commitment with you. That we have a responsibility to love you. We have a responsibility to love our family. We have a responsibility to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. God, unveil that love to us this morning, I pray. In your name, amen. Well, today I'm, I'm kind of back here in the, the living room setting or the, the family room, so to speak. And, and uh, in January, we, we talked about establishing a firm foundation of our faith. And, and we, we looked at Matthew chapter 7. We looked at uh, Romans chapter 12, 1 Thessalonians 5, and James chapter 1. And whenever you build a foundation, you put a foundation in, as we did in January, then you begin, you, you lay your, your, your beginning course, you lay your cornerstones to begin to, to build that thing that you're, you're putting together. And last week, we began to place the first and the primary cornerstone, and that cornerstone was the aspect of love. The love that God has for us and the love that we have for God and for others that, that are in uh, relationship with us and the responsibility that we have to receive God's love and to love others because of what God has done in each one of our lives. And this morning, I want to start out with a story from my life. I want to start out with a story of my grandfather. My grandfather, um, I never knew. It was my father's dad, my father's father. Um, I never knew him because he, he died before I was born. I only know him through, a, through a, two or three different ways. Number one, the stories of fishing and hunting. Whenever my dad got together, I'd always hear the stories of, of my grandfather fishing and hunting. And I don't know if those stories got bigger over time, but man, he sure was a fisherman and a hunterman, okay? Because he did uh, all kinds of awesome things. At least that's the stories that I've heard, okay? And then I know him. Um, I have a couple of his guns and some of his fishing equipment and stuff. I know him through that. Um, I know him. He didn't really keep a, like a formal diary, but what he would do every day, he would just kind of jot down what he did that day. And he kept it in notebooks, and, and I have copies of some of those notebooks, so you can go through and you can see the different years, and you can see what he did this day or that day or, or that day. I have some of his tools. My grandfather started out as a carpenter, and he lived in Gladwin, Michigan, and um, as was quite common in, in his day, he made furniture, and the furniture maker in town also made the caskets. So he made furniture and caskets, and I don't know, maybe he had a sign up, you know, Charles Wood. Casket and furniture maker. I don't know. Whatever they did back then. And uh, so, so I know him from that. Um, I also know him um, through his, his sermons. Um, he wrote his sermons out on, on paper that's almost so thin when you move it, 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 it almost tears. And, and he typed them out and I, I've gone through those and, and, and I've read his sermons. So that's how I know my grandfather. And the reason why I didn't know him and, and why he died before I was born is that he was in his home one day and he was um, early in the morning, a, a consumer's energy high power line broke um, in, in front of their home. And uh, the line came down on his front yard and uh, he knew that, you know, he shouldn't walk out in his front yard and all that kind of thing. And they had contacted consumer powers to come and, and, and take care of that, that line that had fallen in his yard. And as he was sitting there looking out his front window, he saw some children walking down the street and they were headed to the bus stop. And they saw the line down and they began to turn and walk toward the line. And he was concerned that they would go and, and they, would, they would be killed because they get too close to the line. So he came out on his front porch and, and stepped off his front porch and, and yelled at the children to get back because the line had fallen in his yard. And when he was yelling at the children to, to stay back, the line arced up off of the ground and it came and it hit right by his feet. And when it hit by his feet, he was electrocuted and, and he was killed. And so I never had the opportunity of knowing my grandfather. I just, I just know of him from the stories and the things that I read. And um, those messages that I read of my, my grandfather, um, we're, we're talking about the book of, of Ruth today. And I went through his messages 
and I found a message on the book of Ruth. And um, I'm going to be really honest with you. The message this morning is my grandfather's message, okay? It's the notes that he had taken. Now, I don't know all what he said because my grandfather didn't write down everything he did. I don't know if he didn't type too well or what, but he just kind of outlined things. And then he'd say, comment on this, and he'd leave, his, and it's like, comment on what? Okay? And he'd say, comment on this here, and it's like, is he telling a story? Is he commenting on the scripture? But I have the outline of what he, what he said, and it talks about the deep commitment of love. And love is a commitment. So often, again, we think of love as an emotional thing. When, whenever I do a wedding, I always tell the bride and groom, and I have it as part of the wedding ceremony, that love is, is, is more than a feeling. It's an act of will. You know, it's a will to say, I'm sorry, even when we know the other person is wrong. It's a will to extend acts of kindness, even when we know the other person doesn't deserve it. Well, I won't go into my whole marriage ceremony here, but, <laughs> but I, mean, I mean, love is something that, that is part of a commitment. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning, is about the love that God gives us. But if we're really going to reflect that love, it means that we, that you and I, we have to make a commitment to God and we have to make a commitment to others if we're truly going to love them. So, so let's dig in. Let's jump in right at the beginning of Ruth. Now, we're not going to read the whole uh, book of Ruth today. I would encourage you to do that and pick up your Bibles and read the book of Ruth. But we're going to start out in Ruth chapter 1, uh, beginning in verse 1. Long ago, when the judges ruled Israel, there is a shortage of food in the land. Now, in these next few verses, there's a whole bunch of names. I have no idea what the proper pronunciation is. Okay? Um, so I'm going to do my best, and uh, so if you know how they're supposed to be pronounced, I'm sorry, okay, I'm doing my best, all right? So a man named Emelech left the town of Bethlehem in Judea to live in the country of Moab with his wife and his two sons. So I understand here the setting, what's happening. There's a famine in the land, and I imagine this isn't the only fa family that's leaving, but they don't have any food. They're hungry. They're starving. And so they're leaving their home country, they're leaving their home city, they're leaving their friends, they're leaving everything they know because they're hungry. They want something to eat. They're probably, if there isn't any food, there's no jobs. So they don't have any money, they don't have any way of making a living, they don't, they're not able to eat, and so they're going into a strange place with the strange people that do strange things and different customs, and so they're leaving everything they know. And so, so they're on their journey. Um, so a man named Emelech left the town of Bethlehem in Judah to live in the country of Moab with his wife and his two sons. His wife was named Naomi and his two sons were named Malon and Kilon. They were Ephronites from Bethlehem in Judea and when they came to Moab, they settled there. So we know something. We know that they didn't go and we know that they didn't go to this strange place and just stay for a couple days and get some food and go back. We know that they went there and they settled. Now, Naomi's husband, Emelech, died, and she was left with her two sons. Now, I read that, and, you know, I mean, Mike told us about his, his mother-in-law passing and the, the, the pain that they've had. I mean, this is like that pain. I mean, this is a death, and in this culture, in this day and age, the husband owned property. The husband did all the legal aspects. It was a male-dominated society, and so here's the man that, that was responsible and that was recognized by society for everything and now he died and here's a widow with two, two boys. And, and, and what does she do in a land that she doesn't know? Okay. These sons married women from Moab. So now it's, it's, they're, they're getting older. It's getting kind of hopeful here. They're, they're marrying someone. One, one's name was Orpha and the other one was named Ruth. Naomi and her sons lived in Moab about 10 years when the M son and the K son also died, okay? Now, her two, her two boys died, all right? And so they were there about 10 years. They married and then they died. So Naomi was left alone without her husband or her two sons. This is a pretty bleak picture for women in that culture and in that day and age. And so then Naomi, and I'll, I'll spare you all the details, but Naomi has to make a decision whether to stay there or whether to go. And so Orpha went off on her own, and Ruth made a decision. She makes a decision to stay with her. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but every decision you make in life has exponential consequences that follow that decision. 
Decisions that you make today aren't just about today, but they're about tomorrow and next month and next month and next year and the year after that and the year after that and the year after that. I remember when I was in University of Michigan, I had interviewed for a job in business. And it was on a Friday I got word that, that I had that job and it was a great paying job. It was an awesome paying job. It was a job that was beyond what, what I'd ever dreamed of that I could step into right out of college. And my college advisor and my professor had kind of lined me up for it and put me on, in a good word for me and kind of set everything up. And so he was excited. I told him I had the job offer. I went home and that weekend we went to church and God made a call on my heart and my life and I really surrendered to God in a way that I'd never had before. And that Sunday afternoon, Don and I weren't married yet, but we were planning on getting married and we decided on Sunday afternoon that we were going to go into the ministry and we made that decision and on Monday morning I called him and said I wasn't going to take the job and my friend said, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to go to seminary and learn Greek and they all thought I was nuts, okay? But that decision that day didn't just affect Don and I's early marriage years. It didn't just affect a week or a month. It didn't affect our schooling. Well, it affected all those things but it also affected everything that would come from that point to this point. And it even intersects with all of your lives as you are here as part of Waypoint. You see, decisions are important things. And when God calls us to commitments, we need to weigh those pretty heavy. But bottom line, God loves us and God sees more than just our life. And he wants us to make commitments based on his will because his will not only sees us, but his will sees the entire picture of the future. And Ruth, in chapter 1, verse 16, Ruth gives this response to her mother-in-law. Don't beg me to leave you or stop following you. Probably the most famous line out of Ruth, if you know, know the Bible, this is the line that's quoted the most from the, from the book of Ruth in the Old Testament. Where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. So she makes a commitment to God the Father. She makes a commitment to her mother-in-law. She makes a commitment to follow them. She makes a commitment because they have loved her, so then she commits her life to love them. We have sung this morning about how God unconditionally loves us. The other side to that love is that if we're going to love God, we have to unconditionally love commit to God. And wherever God goes, we'll go with him. Wherever he leads us, we'll say, God, I'll follow. Whatever he calls us to do, we'll say, God, I'll do. Whatever he calls us to give, we'll say, God, I'll give. Wherever he calls us to lay down our life, we'll say, God, I'll do it. Wherever he calls us to give our time, we'll say, God, I'll give my time. Because love motivates us to surrender, to surrender to this God who loves us so much that he sent his son so that we could be forgiven, so we could spend eternity in heaven with him. Now there's another part to the book of Ruth. There's that commitment, and then there's a cool love story, all right? And, and, and the love story is like this, is that, you know, here you've got now Naomi, who lost her husband, and you've got Ruth, who lost her husband, but Ruth is still a young woman, and so what's going to happen here? Well, let's pick up the story in Ruth chapter 2, verse 3. So Ruth went out to the fields and gathered the grain that the workers cutting the grain had left behind. Now when they used to go out in the fields, they didn't have combines, they cut grain like this. And they cut the stalks and there'd be the grain head at the top and they would gather big bundles of grain as, as much as they could physically put together and physically carry themselves. They would carry it to where it would be processed but they would leave, you know, some behind. And so Ruth was coming and she was gathering her own grain so her family could eat and, and, and binding them together so that they'd have grain to make flour and, and, and subsist. And so that's what was happening. It just so happened in the field belonged to Boaz. Now Boaz is a nice looking young man. Okay, you can see where this is going. From Emelech's family. Soon Boaz came from Bethlehem and greeted his workers, the Lord be with you. And the workers answered, may the Lord bless you. Have you ever been in a church where they say, you know, may the Lord bless you and then, you know, you, you respond back and also to you, you know, that, that all comes out of Ruth, okay? That's, that's the, the, where they came from, okay? Then Boaz asked his servant in charge of the workers, whose girl is that? What do you think Boaz is doing? There's a good looking young lady that I haven't met before and where'd she come from, okay? So he's kind of scoping it out. 
Now the story continues and the mother-in-law gets involved. No, Naomi gets involved. Now I don't know if your mother or father got inv involved in your, your romance, okay? My mom and dad didn't. When I started, I'll tell you a secret, when I started dating Dawn, my mom and dad didn't like it, okay? And they didn't like that I was going out with her, but they fell in love with her and everything's good now, okay? But, but here Naomi, she really likes Boaz and she wants Ruth to, to hook up with, with, with him. So then listen to what it says in chapter 3. Then Naomi, Ruth's mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, I must find a suitable home for you, one that will be good for you. So she feels that burden because, again, in a male-dominated society, a young woman doesn't have much future without a male, okay? Now Boaz, whose young woman you worked with, is our close relative. Tonight he'll be working at the threshing floor. Now the threshing floor was a, was a floor that, that had stones on it and, and a lot of times it would have a large round stone that they would take the heads of the grain and they would press it out of the head and they would separate it out and they would put it in baskets and they would sort it and, and they would clean it. And so, so that was the, the threshing floor where, where all of that wheat would go uh, to be processed. And, the, and so that's where he was. Now listen to what her mother-in-law tells her to do. Wash yourself, put on perfume, change your clothes, and go down to the threshing floor. Make sure that Boaz notices you. That's what she's doing, all right? But don't let him know you're there until he has finished his dinner. Watch him so that you will know where he lies down to sleep. When he lies down, go and lift the cover off his feet and lie down. He will tell you what you should do. Then Ruth answered, I will do everything you say. Isn't that kind of weird? I mean, it is. I mean, in our culture, we look at it and say, that's kind of weird. But look what Ruth did. She loved her mother-in-law, and because of her love for her mother-in-law, she did what she was told. I love God. Well, God says to do A, B, and C. Well, I only want to do A and B. Do you really love God? You see, when we commit and we love God, it means that we follow that one who has loved us. I mean, Ruth is this, this example, this commitment. So then, in Ruth 4, Then Boaz said to the elders and to all the people, You are witnesses today. I am buying from Naomi everything that belonged to the two sons and, and Amalek, and I'm also taking Ruth. The Moabite, who is the wife of the M son, is my wife. Okay? So what she's doing, she's taking Ruth. He's taking Ruth as his wife. And I'm doing this so her dead husband property will stay in his name and his name will not be separated from his family and his hometown. You are my witnesses today. So Boaz comes down. He falls in love with this beautiful woman. He takes her as his wife and he maintains all of the property that she couldn't own as a woman, but he takes it to him. And not only does he take it to him, but he leaves it in her first husband's name. He could have taken it in his name. He could have taken the property for him, but he didn't because he loved Ruth. Now, it's really cool what happens at the end of this. Now, you read the end of Ruth and you read it and you don't even realize it, but Solomon was the father of Boaz, who was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of David. Now, just a few months ago, we had three months ago, we were celebrating Christmas. And if you remember the Christmas story, it prophesies that God would send his son and you shall call him name Jesus for he will be of the house and the line of who? David. David. Wow. All of a sudden Ruth, a very simple woman who had gone to a foreign country who just simply said, I'll love God and commit to God and I'll follow the people of God and I'll do whatever God tells me to do. All of a sudden... She's in the story of the birth of Christmas, of the Son of God. I mean, she's right there. She has eternal significance. Now, here's something about following God. So many times we see the decisions about loving God and following God as isolated. I mean, I want to follow God because I want the best for my life. And so I follow God and I surrender to Him and I ask Him to forgive the wrongs that I've done in my life so I can go to heaven and... I mean, we make it so personal. We make our relationship with God all about what God is going to do for me. But understand, when I ask God to forgive my sins, I began a journey of loving God. And because God loved me, then he called me away from business and into the ministry. 
And because he called me into the ministry, he intersected my life with hundreds and thousands of people that I never would have gotten to know or influence without God working in my life. And because of that, then those people go on and they have eternal influence and the kingdom grows and it grows and it becomes much larger than church. It becomes a kingdom. And every decision we make in our life has eternal significance. When you make the decision, I'm going to love God and I'm going to do everything that God has asked me to do, you make the decision that your life is going to be eternally significant. Now, sometimes we don't even see how God's going to do that and sometimes in our lifetime we don't see the results but someday we will go to heaven And we're going to see all of the intertwinings of our life and us following God and somebody else following God. And as a result, somebody else heard about Jesus and then somebody else heard about Jesus and somebody else heard about Jesus. And it's just this huge web of eternal significance. But that only takes place when you and I make a commitment. God has loved me unconditionally. And God wants us to love him without condition. God, I love you, and because I love you, God, where you go, I'll go. And what you say, I'll do. And your instructions in my life, that's how I'm going to live my life. How you tell me to give, that's how I'm going to give. How you tell me to invest, that's how I'm going to invest. How you tell me to spend my time, that's how I'm going to spend my time. How you tell me to live my life, that's how I'm going to live my life. How do we know what God tells us? Well, he gives us a book. It's called the Bible. And we read it, and we study it, and we follow it. God gives us the Holy Spirit who speaks to our heart and who talks to us and is with us as we're followers of God and His Son. He sends us the Holy Spirit to speak deeply to our hearts so we know the decisions and the ways to go in our life. And as a result, we live a life that's full of peace and satisfaction and we know that we are part of the eternal story of God the Father on this little tiny planet called Earth. Isn't that cool? To me, that's really neat. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thanks for this morning. Thanks for this little book in the Old Testament called Ruth. Thank you, God, that you speak to our hearts. Thank you, God, that you love us unconditionally as we've sung this morning. God, thank you that you even offer us to love you. And God, thank you that it's so amazing that when we love you, not only do we receive personal benefit, not only do we receive peace at times that Mike has shared when when we face death of a loved one, you give us peace and comfort in the middle of our loss. God, thank you for that personal gift. Thank you, God, that you forgive our sins. When we make mistakes, we can come to you and say, God, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? Lord, so much personal benefit, but God, thank you that your love didn't stop there. It goes beyond that. And when we commit to you, God, Our lives can have eternal purpose and eternal significance. And it happens simply because we love you. God, help us to commit to the way of life that you call us to do. Help us to be who you've called us to be, the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. In your name we pray, amen. Let's stand together.
do wonders anew. You captured my heart with this love. Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. Sing that again. You opened my eyes to your wonders anew. You captured my heart with this love. Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you. Beautiful one I love. Beautiful one I adore. Beautiful one my soul. Amen. As we close this morning, I want to read to you a short little blessing that was read at uh, the last uh, the service that uh, we had the honor of being with my mother-in-law. It says this, life is short. We do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift, swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the divine mystery who is beyond our knowing, but who made us and loves us and travels with us, bless you and keep you in peace. Go now in safety. Thank you.